for this project, we're going to be using water to create art. We're going to use a pipette, piece of paper. You're going to use something to spill on. If you don't have this, you could use something like paper towel or uh, just a regular old towel that you don't mind if it gets a little paint on it. You're going to need some tape, or if you're going to be using it up against the fridge like I am, you could use magnets. A cup with some water in it and your watercolor paints. Go get your supplies and I'll meet you back here. The first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to wake up your paints. Right now they're dry and sleepy. So we're actually going to put a lot of water in this time. Normally when we're painting with a brush, we just put a little dip and drip into our paint. But since we're using a pipette today and this is all about water, we're going to take our pipette, pinch, put it in the water, then let it go. You'll notice that the water gets sucked up inside. If I pinch it again, the water squirts out. So first I pinch, then I dip, then I let go. And it sucks it up. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take it over some of my paints and I'm gonna drip some of it. I don't wanna squeeze it too hard, but I do kinda of wanna make a puddle in my paint. I'm gonna be gonna... using bright and colorful paints for mine, so I'm not going to choose any black. You might want to think about choosing colors that are right next to each other in your tray. Like the colors like green, blue, and purple are right next to each other in my tray. They're right next to each other in the rainbow, so they're going to look really nice together. I got my red wet, but now that I notice, my orange is all gone. So I can't do a color that's right next to red. So I think what I'll do is I think I'll do my green, blue, and purple. I'll use my cool colors, sometimes thought of as those Elsa colors. So I'm gonna get that wet, pinch, dip, let go, onto the blue. You might wanna pick three colors, you could do two. Pinch, dip, and I'm just getting each one of the colors I'm going to use wet. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up my paper. I'm right over here next to my refrigerator and I'm going to be attaching my drip sheet, it's for catching all the drips, to my refrigerator because for this project your paper needs to hang and I don't have an easel. So I'm gonna hang mine right on my refrigerator. So I'm first gonna use my drip sheet behind and I'm gonna leave some of the drip sheet on the refrigerator and I'm going to leave the rest on the floor so nothing drips in a puddle on the floor, my drip sheet will catch it. Again, if you don't have one of these drip sheets, you can also use a paper towel or an old towel as long as you ask an adult first if that's okay to use. So I used some magnets to hang up my drip sheet and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some tape and I'm going to tape my piece of paper right on here to my drip sheet. I just want to make sure that I'm only going to put piece of tape right along the top. I have to decide which way I want it to go. This way, portrait style, or this way, like landscape. Then I need to put the tape across the top and attach it to my drip sheet. So now I have my piece of paper taped onto my drip sheet. My drip sheet is being held up by magnets onto the refrigerator. I could also tape it up there and I could just use the wall. I don't have to use the refrigerator, but I wanna make sure that my paper is hanging off of something vertically and that I have my drip sheet below on the floor so I don't get a puddle on the floor because I'm going to be dripping onto my paper. Next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tape my pipette again and I'm going to go into my first color. Remember, pick maybe two or three colors that are next to each other in the rainbow. These are called analogous colors. Can you say analogous? Analogous. That means next to each other. So I'm going to pinch and suck up some of my green. It's okay if you get some air bubbles in there. Then right over to my paper, I'm going to go near the top of my paper and I'm just going to let go a little bit. Some areas I might let go a lot, some I might let go just a little. And you might even just see if it falls out on its own. You don't always have to touch the paper, but you'll get more on the paper and less on your drip, drip pad if you touch the paper. Now I'm gonna get more and make 
my picture look really beautiful using drips of water. I can't wait to see the artwork you create. These are so fun and beautiful. One thing that I would suggest is that if you look at mine, you'll see that there's little drips that haven't come off. Oh, I got it on my finger. What you might want to think about doing is taking a tiny bit of the drip cloth, the drip pad, and just touching the bottom of your paper, real gentle. You don't want to wipe because then it's going to spread and it'll get rid of that drip look. But if you just gently touch, it'll get rid of those big droplets and it'll dry a little bit faster. You want to leave it wait, hang here until it's completely all the way dry. So let it rest. Try not to mess with it. I know it's hard, but we don't want it to be completely covered. We still want to be able to see some of the white spaces.